every now and then I get people asking me, am I still shooting Nikon? Have I switched over to Sony? And on the Tangents blog, I sometimes post photographs where I've used Canon or even Fuji, and then people ask me, what am I shooting with? It seems like I need to be fixed to a specific system. Uh, well, it depends on what I'm doing, whether I'm shooting events or video or time lapse or little project for myself. All of these imply different camera systems, different combinations of equipment and different lenses, different cameras. I'm Neil Vinnie Kirk. Let's have a look what's in my camera bag. For weddings and events, corporate events, I use the Think Tank Logistics Manager 30 bag. It's massive, takes a lot of gear. It tends to be heavy if I stack it with everything that I have. And in this bag, it is all Sony. Well, before we get to the cameras, let's have a look. I have a Rode Go microphone. I use Sennheiser lavaliers when I shoot video, but occasionally I'll get a client surprising me, oh, can you shoot video? And then I might be stuck without a microphone. Not anymore. In this little bag, I keep the Rode Go microphones so that I always have at least this minimum setup for microphones. And then in the rest, there's spam SD cards, uh, pocket knife, uh, gels, random odds and ends, a few cables, and then also very important earplugs. You have to have earplugs if you shoot events. They can be noisy, you have to protect your ears. Okay, let's get to the gear. The first off is my main camera, which is now a Sony A1 with a Sony 24 to 70 2.8 GM lens. Beautiful camera, and I love the lens. However, it's still not the ultimate. We'll come back to it. I still have to bring in another camera, my Nikon D5, under certain situations. And let me show you these two photographs. When the light is very low, and low contrast and weird lighting, strange colors, mirrorless cameras tend to hunt. We'll see what the Nikon Z9 does. I haven't tested that yet, but the Sony A9, the Sony A1, Nikon Z7, Z6, they all tend to hunt. They don't do well in a lot. I still have to bring my Nikon D5, but let's go, we'll get to that. Okay, so the main camera is this absolutely phenomenal Sony A1 with a 24 to 70. Now this is where it gets interesting. I have a hesitancy to changing lenses. So I tend to want, I tend to veer towards having a lens for every camera or a camera for every lens. People that shoot video or time lapse will appreciate this. I try and avoid dust on a sensor. If you have dust on the sensor, that is an absolute mission to clean over thousands of frames for time lapse or on video. Even on stills, it's just, you have better things to do with your life than clean dust spots. So as I mentioned, I try not to change lenses. I have five bodies, one Sony A1 and four A9s. I only change lenses on the one A9. The other three A9s, the lenses don't come off. So I, clean, I cleaned the sensor meticulously, not a single dust spot in sight. And for this, I use the eye lead. We'll, I'll show you that in a short while. Uh, meticulously clean the sensor and then slap the lens on. The, len the lens is married to this body, doesn't come off. And it has to be a really extreme situation for me to swap lenses on the main cameras. Okay, that's my main body, the A1 with the 24 to 70. And then I recently changed over from the 70 to 180 to 2.8 Tamron to the 35 to 150 2.8. Well, f2 at 35 and 2.8 at 150. Surprisingly sharp lens, has a bit of barrel distortion and pin cushion distortion at the extreme ends, but surprisingly sharp. And I think this lens is just perfect for portrait photographers and wedding photographers. It covers a range from, we have wide enough portraits to get in the environment to tight. And at 2.8, obviously you can isolate your subject from the background, just a beautiful lens. And I find that I, I found that I don't often go to the 200 millimeter length, maybe in church at a distance, although with high resolution cameras, less of a problem. But generally, I don't really go over 180. That's why the 70 to, 200, 70 to 180 was a fine lens. And then I consolidated to the 35 to 150. This is going to see a lot of work. Again, the camera is on the body, doesn't ever come off, it just stays. Next up, an A9, another A9 with a 16 to 35 2.8. Beautifully sharp, 
ultra wide zoom. Again, the lens is married to the body, it doesn't come off. The sensor is meticulously clean. Boom. So if I can shoot video, if I shoot, uh, if I, I use this camera with this lens, if I shoot video on the gimbal, the ultra wide works. Now you might think this costs a lot of money. It does, it kind of does, but also I didn't buy them new. I bought one A9 new. The other three A9s I bought used. And your best value for camera is a previous generation camera used. And I think right now the A9 used is phenomenal value for money. Because I think the quality of cameras, the image quality has kind of plateaued. So uh, the, it's incremental, the uh, improvements we get. So uh, the 3 A9 is going to last me a long while still. And then we have another A9 with an 85, 1.4 GM lens. I love this lens. There's rumors about a 1.2 85 GM coming out sometime. And uh, I'll hop onto that one. But for now, I'm really happy with this lens. Super sharp. I don't tend to swap lenses on this camera body. I try and keep it clean, isolated. And then I have 35 1.8 Sony. This is such a beautiful lens. I absolutely love it. Razor sharp, wide open, and the focusing is so fast. Absolutely amazing lens. Now this body is the only body that I change lenses on because I have two other primes that I uh, sometimes use. Let's grab them. In this pouch I keep a... It'll come out soon. A 35 1.4 GM, because occasionally, super low light, you just need a wide lens with 1.4. But the 35 millimeter length, I've got it covered in the 24 to 70, the 16 to 35, and the 35 to 150. So I use this lens if I need the 1.4. And then I have, ah, somewhere deep here in the recesses of my camera bag, the Sony 1.4 50 millimeter Planar lens, the uh, Zeiss design. It is crazy sharp. I love it. Beautiful rendering. I haven't found a compelling reason to change the 1.2 yet. Maybe someday. I've got other toys that I want to get before I go to the 51.2. And then, of course, also important is 19mm f2.8 macro. This gets occasionally used at weddings. I don't use it much else, but uh, for ring shots and detail shots, the macro lens. So those are the lenses and cameras that I carry around to events. Corporate events, I tend to use macro, uh, not macro lenses, the prime lenses and the silent shutter on the cameras. Just, it's absolutely essential for me that you don't have to click, 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 click that uh, distracts your presenters. And then the prime lenses allow me to shoot in low light, in fluorescent lighting, whatever the auditorium might have, I can shoot and get decent uh, ISO and uh, fast enough shutter speed that I don't get camera shake and the lens is the 1.4, 1.8 is just crazy sharp. So the prime lenses I tend to use for uh, events where I can't use flash and uh, I can't use additional lighting and I have to be surreptitious. But generally I love my zooms and right now it is the 24 to 70, 16 to 35 and the 35 to 150 all three of them 2.8 lenses. All of them Sony except for the Tamron 35 to 150. Now this is my camera bag in January 2022. It'll change. I keep on moving forward, keep on dropping stuff, uh, getting new, new lenses, new cameras. Now it's not necessarily an expensive proposition. If you buy used, you can use the lens for a month, two months, three months, and then sell it for very nearly the same price that you bought it. So you can regard it as a three month rental for very little money. So if you're interested in trying different lenses, think about that. Buy used, use the lens, baby it, make sure there's no additional wear and tear on it, and then sell it for pretty much the same price. A very cheap rental. Okay, then the rest of my bag would be Two Profoto A1 flashes, A1X flashes for Sony. Two of them, the modifiers, spare batteries, the Profoto TTL transmitters, and gaffer tape. And that is pretty much it in my bag for events and for weddings. It, is, it covers a wide range of uh, 
focal lens. There's a lot of overlap, but every lens has a very specific use. As I said, for the work that I do, I don't generally tend towards 200 to the longer focal lengths. Uh, I don't do much sport, well, any sport. So uh, for the portrait work, the work that I do, this is perfect. However, I still drag along another bag with a Nikon D5. The mirrorless autofocusing just doesn't quite deliver accurate, fast focusing in challenging lighting. If you have low contrast light and it's low levels and the DJ lights flash, I find mirrors have no idea what's happening. Then I pull out my D5 that I still carry around. Let me show you what's in my spare bag that I still drag around for challenging light, challenging events. In this think tank international airport, I still bring along, only to weddings though, a Nikon D5 because in low light, weird colored of lights and flashing uh, DJ lights, I find that mirrorless cameras that I've used just don't cope. My Nikon D5 still is the answer there. Uh, the focusing is just spot on always and the even the Sony A1 doesn't quite compete. Sorry fanboys. And then in this bag I also have a Profera A1 flash for, with a Nikon mount and another SB5000 flash and a flash bracket in case I need to shoot horizontal and vertical with on-camera flash and a SC29 Nikon cable. So a very small Nikon system uh, for emergency use when I know that my uh, mirrorless cameras just can't cope. So I always have that in reserve. So that is what I use for events and weddings. It's mostly the Sony system with a variety of 2.8 zooms and the fast primes. And really fantastic system that I love, but there is the shortcoming. The Sony A1, two shortcomings for me. It's still, it's that low light autofocusing just isn't there. And then also 50 megapixels. There's no medium raw. I don't need 50 megapixels of everything. 24 megapixels is, is sufficient for the vast majority of work that I do. But occasionally I do need high resolution and then the 50 megapixel is just beautiful. But I would have loved to have had a medium raw option on a Sony A1. So that is the, the one real negative to the camera. It is just too much. Okay, next step. Time lapse. For time lapse, I use a completely different system. Hang in there. For time lapse photography, I still use the Nikon D810. I don't need a very complicated camera. It's a very capable camera, but I use it in a fairly simplistic manner, especially for time lapse. 36 megapixels is overkill, but it does allow me to crop in quite a lot when I generate time lapse images. So for time lapse, I have standardized on five. Nikon D810s. And when I do roll it in, I use this think tank bag. Let me quickly see what it is. It is the Production Manager 40. It is huge. And I have enough space here for the clamps and the controllers and the batteries and the AC adapters, etc., etc. And in this bag, five cameras. Four of them, the lenses don't come off at all. And the fifth camera, I do. Occasionally, occasionally swap lenses. So let's have a look here. I have two DA10s with 14 to 24s. That's when I need the extra width. But sometimes I work on construction sites where there's a lot of dust. Then I prefer working with the two 16 to 35s because there's a filter on top. So I can cover the camera and lens in a plastic bag, protect it, and the filter protects the lens. So, but occasionally I've had jobs where even five cameras are not enough, then I have to rent. But usually two cameras, sometimes four cameras, and then the four wide angle lenses will do it. Again, as I said, I don't swap lenses out. This way the sensors remain pristine. And I only swap cameras out on a fifth body, a Nikon D10. This camera I tend to use for uh, Long-term time lapses where I work with a camera in a dome, and a waterproof dome, and the waterproof and the camera and battery is fed off a solar panel, and then I can't use the big lenses; they don't fit in the dome. And then I use uh, two shorter lenses, the 18 to 35, 
3.5 to 4.5. Now with time lapse, you tend to shoot at f11, f8. Uh, fairly deep apertures, you want a lot of depth of field. Also you're trying to slow the shutter speed way down. So you don't need 2.8 lenses for time lapse. You need the appropriate lens, wide angle lenses usually. And then the, so the 18 to 35, 3.5 to 4.5 is more than adequate. It, on the camera, it is short enough, compact enough to fit in a waterproof dome. So I have two of these and then I have a slightly longer lens in here somewhere. What is this? Oh, another 18 to 35. Where does it, where is it hiding? This might be it. Yeah, in the waterproof dome, if I need a slightly longer lens, the 24 to 85, 3.5 to 4.5. And again, I don't need 2.8 in that situation. The slower, more compact lens is more than sufficient. So that is my setup for time-lapse, based around a Nikon system, the A10. And I've had people ask me, why don't you go to Sony, etc. And it'll be far too expensive for me to just summarily shift over because it's the co controllers and it's the clamps. It's all the Nikon-specific devices that are used. So for now, this is it. And with that, I can generate 6K time lapses. If I ever get the need for 8K time lapses, then I'll have to look at a 45 or 50 megapixel camera. But right now, this is more than adequate for what I need. So this system stays in a shelf in my studio out of the way and it's only when I roll it out on location on site that I bring it in this bag and I roll it out with all the other accessories. So that is my what's in my bag for time lapse. Five Nikon D10 bodies and ultra wide angle zooms. Now let's look at what's in my bag when I have fun. Hang in there. So what's in my camera bag when I have fun? Well it depends on what kind of photography fun I intend. The, uh, something that I really enjoy is infrared black and white photographs. It's a relaxing way to go explore New York. And I do infrared black and white landscapes or cityscapes of Manhattan. And with infrared black and white, skies go deep black. Any foliage go white, grass goes white, tree leaves go white. And it just looks amazing. Uh, you can have a look at my website, infrarednyc.com. You'll see examples of my work. And for that, I have a infrared converted Sony a7 II, converted by LifePixel for deep infrared black and white. And on the camera I have a Sony 20mm f1.8. The fast aperture is not that necessary, but I do like the wide angle lens. And then something else I also enjoy is playing with vintage lenses. Now vintage, vintage lenses, uh, if you pick the lens for, for a specific characteristic, they uh, give you a very interesting bouquet, a very interesting rendering of the scene. So I have a whole bunch of these. Uh, here's a 85mm Helios lens, 1.5. Highlights in the background give all kind of, uh, kind of an oval shape bouquet. It's uh, very interesting, very beautiful, if that is what you enjoy. And so that's the way it renders the background. And it's kind of fun exploring with that. And then I have a whole range of other lenses. Here's an old. Um, Takuma 35mm lens and a whole bunch of them that I play around with and I just go explore f uh, nature, flowers, scenery, landscapes, cityscapes with these lenses and also portraits just in the way that renders the background. So with that, that is in my, that's what's in my camera bag. It depends on what I do, what is the intent. Again, whether it's events, weddings, corporate events, it's the same bag, or whether I shoot video, that's an entirely different, or slightly different selection, and then time lapses, and then fun setups. So that is what's in my camera bag. Mm -hmm.